It's already been a year since we broke it down from 40 to number one, the top 20 quarterback countdown. That's what we'll do over the course of the next month as we work from 40 all the way to number one. There it is. Last year, it was Patrick Mahomes one, Russell Wilson two, Aaron Rodgers three. Forget about Jordan Love. Forget about the Packers front office not properly catering to Rodgers. The disrespect <laughs> that you demonstrated by putting him at three is what spurred him to become the MVP last year. <laughs> maybe that's what, maybe I'll do it again. Maybe that's what I need to do to the guy. Maybe that's what it is. It's all about me and, and giving him the red hot poker. I know. Well, I adjusted that, of course, during the season. After week 10, we did a little, like, readjustment and, of course, made him uh, number two at that point. But, hey, it's always a fun exercise this time of the year. I've been, I worked on it all last week. Ton of notes doing all of it the list will not look like it did last year it's going to be a different list and there was definitely some you know different moving parts putting this year's list together you know no no drew Brees, no philip rivers young commodities that are unproven coming through the draft you know rookies who are going to be second year guys it was it was uh i felt like a little tougher this year than than maybe i've had uh, over the last three or four years doing this yeah i mean think about the turnover that we see now with veteran quarterbacks. So how do you transfer how you regard a guy with a team that he's been with maybe for years and all of a sudden is on a new team? But veteran quarterbacks move like never before because teams are thinking, we want a franchise quarterback, and the only place to get one, uh, unless and until Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, and or Deshaun Watson are available in trade, is to draft one. Right. No, I, you're exactly right. It's uh, Hey, it's 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 a prime position. we got a lot of good quarterbacks in football right now. There's no doubt. There's some superstar, talented guys. we got guys who got superstar talent that are kind of growing into that, finding their way. Um, so that that's where it's interesting. And yeah, it was. It was. It was tough. You know, Big Ben's, Jimmy G's, Carson Wentz, right? His issues, where do you put those type of guys, all of that, with the rookie quarterbacks? Uh, I always have the toughest time, Mike, like through 10 through 20. That's such a tough, close little area, nitpicking those guys as far as really good quarterbacks, got a lot of superstar, you know, potential and traits and those type of things. So uh, I'm just glad I'm done with it and uh, excited to talk about it now. And we're going to get started on it, but you reminded me of something that I try to emphasize whenever this comes up. Five years ago, there weren't nearly as many competent quarterbacks right. available to NFL teams as there are today. Mark my words, this is the first step toward what will become a discussion regarding expansion of the league because there's only so many games you can play in order to increase inventory. One way to increase inventory is to add teams, and they're going to want as much inventory of games as possible as gambling continues, becomes legalized uh, yeah. in more and more states. Expansion, it's coming. I don't know when, but at one point, not that long ago, I thought we're never going to see it. I think we're going to see it, and I think the talk is going to begin within five years, and there'll be more teams within 10. I, I wouldn't be shocked, Mike. I mean, you know, again, look, look, look at the recent influx of quarterbacks we have every year, like you're talking about here. And that, that's what you're basically saying, that we can have 36 franchise quarterbacks or something like that. I know not all 36 teams or whatever would, but, you know, enough of a percentage to where we go, this is still really good football, and we didn't miss anything like that. And it has increased. I mean, I, I think if we sat here like 10 years ago and you and I were doing this show, we'd probably be going. I don't know if there's enough franchise quarterbacks in football. I don't think that's an issue now. You've heard me say before, I think there's plenty of good quarterbacks now. To me, there's not enough good offensive coordinators going around now. That's, that's what's really flipped around here. And with the sport being so popular and it's – Flag football. I mean, listen, I'm at a I'm at flag football yesterday. Phil, uh, I mean, uh, Mike, my little boy Philip, ten years old. There's a hundred games going on. Flag football, all age groups. I mean, f forty fields. It's everywhere. These kids are throwing thirty balls a day. Everything. That's they love football. Our country loves it. It's only going to make our best athletes want to keep playing quarterbacks to fill those holes, like you're talking about. If there's extra teams, so I think that's a very very real thing, uh, you know, into the future and certainly something to keep your eye on. You're right, Mike. At all other positions, the supply has outweighed demand for decades. When you think of all the college yeah. programs, quarterbacks, where there's been the deficiency, that deficiency's gone, more NFL teams coming. Starting off the list, 
down eight spots from 32 last year at number 40, the backup quarterback to Baker Mayfield in Cleveland, the guy who took a team to the brink of the Super Bowl four years ago in Minnesota, Case Keenum, number 40, Chris. Yeah, Case Keenum, listen, I mean, one of the best backup quarterbacks in football. He really is. I, I'd love to have Case Keenum as my backup quarterback because, you know, as you know, too, he's got, you know, starting potential. Yeah, you know, the greatest thing about Case Keenum is he can do it all. There's no great weakness about his game. And, you know, what's even better about it there in Cleveland is he's a poor man's version of the starting quarterback. I mean, that's really what he is. He's just a lesser Baker Mayfield. So, you know, they don't have to change anything with their offense or do anything like that. But Case Keenum, come on, experience, can move in the pocket, has the ability to extend plays, is a really consistent thrower of the football, really never loses control of it, does any of those type of things, has a little moxie and toughness about him. Like, no doubt, Case Keenum. I mean, you, you got him. He's the one of the best insurance policies in all of football when it comes to backup quarterbacks. If Baker Mayfield, and I think a lot of him, and he's going to be coming up later down the list, closer to that top 10, maybe in the top 10, right? I think a lot of him. But if he was to get hurt week 12 and Case Keenum had to come in, I don't know. I'm a little bit like, okay, I know that's going to hurt a little that there's no Baker Mayfield, but they can still win games with Case Keenum and, and maybe make a run in the playoffs and go to a Super Bowl and that type of thing. So that's where I really love Case Keenum. Got it all, fits what they do there, and really, like I said, no maybe weakness to his game, maybe no great glaring strength, but no weakness and can do it all. 2017, Sam Bradford had a great week one performance on a Monday night against the New Orleans Saints. Showed up on the injury report with a knee injury a couple of days later. Never played again. Case Keenum came in, lost at Pittsburgh, but then took the Vikings on a hell of a run. And his skill was escaping the pocket, yeah. moving laterally, resetting, and he'd keep doing it until he found somebody wide open. And the Vikings soured on him because they thought he was bailing out too quickly and using those skills. Now they have a guy who stays in the pocket because he can't bail out. Yeah, that's right. You it's like I have the a opposite. Kirk Cousins lands somewhere higher than 40 on the list. We'll get to him at some point. But Keenum, fair assessment at 40. He is down eight spots, but I agree with you. He can win football games if and when the Browns need him to do so. Now it gets interesting right out of the gates. After 40, we climb to 39, obviously. The Bears' rookie quarterback, not their veteran, but Justin Fields, the guy they gave up all that stuff to go get, he's installed at number 39. Why so low for a guy who's already, other than Tim Tebow, high on the list of the jerseys that people have to have? Well, I'm sure. I mean, listen, he's he's a specimen, and he's one of these guys on the list that, yeah, he's got big potential. I mean, if we do this midseason next year and he's starting and playing, I mean, yeah, he's got the ability to make, be a big climber. But I got too many questions about – you know, Justin Fields for me to like do what I did with like Joe Burrow last year and put him in the 20s, even though he hadn't played a game in the NFL. I didn't I didn't care. I knew Joe Burrow was going to throw dimes and make the right decisions and be slippery in the pocket. Justin Fields, you know, he is going to bring the element of running the football. There's no doubt about that. His arm is big. We know that, too. You know, and there are moments where when he puts it all together, it can look as good as anybody in college football, and it can look special. You know my concerns. We talked about it a lot through the draft. There's inconsistencies, big-time inconsistencies, one that scares me to where, yeah, that's why I did have him the six-rated quarterback, you know, coming out in this draft. I understand, you know, it, it's a big-time potential, but there's a lot of growing within the position, throwing the football you know, in the pocket, cleaning up mechanics, doing all of those type of things that need to be improved. So, like, I love the top-end thought of Justin Fields. It's just there's a bottom-end thought that's a little scary, too, and I hope it doesn't get to there. I'm not – I don't want to see bad. I, I like this kid. I know the way he handles himself, everything about it, but I just have those concerns in the game to where I can't make them higher than that right now because I'm uncomfortable with some of those things. Last year, you had Tua Tonga-Vailoa at number 40. He had the question marks with that hip injury he suffered. Between the two right now, which yeah. one do you view as the, the higher-end prospect at the NFL level? I think Fields has more potential to be a greater player. I do. He's, he's just got you know, more to offer as far as high-end talent. 
His his running is special, like we talked about. He's a Greek god, built like Cam Newton, quick, can make people miss, can run with spe- you know, outrun you with speed. We know all of that, you know. And then of course, you know, like we've talked about, he can make throws where you go, whoa, wow, like there's no way Tua can make that throw or do that. Whoa, holy cow, you know. But it's some of the other things in between where, hey, it's a ten yard crossing route. Tua's on the money all the time with that type of stuff where. You know, again, Justin Fields, I can pull up games and go, damn, there's nobody around this guy, and he's like two for ten on this route. Like, that, that's what's scary about it. So his ultimate potential, I do think, is far greater than Tua, but I do see a bigger bust factor there too. The uh, folks at Points Bet have put together the odds. The quarterback expected to take the first snap week one. The Bears will be at L.A. to take on the Rams. Andy Dalton, minus 200. you got to bet 200 to win 100. Justin Fields, plus 165. Bet 100, win 165. There's Nick Foles. Yeah. Poor Nick Foles. Yeah. The, the only Super Bowl MVP on the depth <laughs> chart. Plus 1,200. I, I'll be surprised if he's even on the roster come September. But uh, I'm surprised it's Dalton. And I know that the Bears are, are saying everything that they need to say. They haven't installed Justin Fields as the starter. And with them, maybe the dynamic is we're more concerned about next year than this year because the organization has implicitly given Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy two years now before they're, they're truly on the hot seat and they have some time to develop Justin Fields. You don't want to throw him out there before he's ready. No. I just think that everything you've given up – Uh huh. To go get him, uh-huh. if you can't beat out Andy Dalton, maybe you shouldn't have given up all that stuff to go get him. I, I, I hear you. I think that's going to be you know hovering over the Bears, that little theme and conversation you're talking about there, Mike. I think in their heart of hearts, they're probably hoping for like a, a, a Carson Wentz-type scenario in Philadelphia back in the day, right? You've talked about it before, where it's like, hey, yeah, Sam Bradford's the starter. He's the starter. Carson Wentz has done good every day in camp, every good in camp. Okay, get it. All right, make him the starter. Let's go. Wentz is a starter. See you later, Sam Bradford. Not that they would trade Andy Dalton. Maybe they would. I don't know. They do have Nick Foles. But I would think if it's close or they show that Justin Fields, if Justin Fields shows that he's not mentally overwhelmed by learning a new offense or any of those type of things, and he understands where to go with the ball and those type of things, you, you, you can, they could do it. I mean, they could play with that that way. His again, his running ability is is to me a, a big time notch above a guy like Jalen Hurts in Philadelphia, right? So again, you can make some of the pass game stuff, you know, easy and help him kind of break in easily in that department because of the threat of him running the football and doing those things. And that might be the thing that helps, you know, gives him time to grow and, and work on some of the things we've talked about. Fields was the 11th overall pick in the draft. He comes in at 39. At 38, the guy who was the third overall pick in the draft, Trey Lance, North Dakota State, played one game last year. The 49ers decided they are all in, at least in, you know, uh, after they get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo, whenever that may be, with Trey Lance. Why so low? You're going to have some 49ers fans coming after you today for putting their guy so low, Chris. Well, I know, but, I mean, you know, anybody that's listened to me throughout the draft process, yeah, I mean, I I, I have concerns here, too. Listen, I love the high-end talent. Again, it's just like Justin Fields. The the highlight shows are great. When you watch the highlight package, you go, damn, this is really special. You know, the one thing he has over at Justin Fields is there is more consistency in him throwing the football. You know, but still, there are too many throws in any game I look at to where I just go, I've never seen a top five quarterback miss that throw three times in a row or four times in the first half or, you know, make a guy be this open over the middle and he's got to stop or fall to the ground to catch a ball that if it's just somewhat accurate, he's going to keep running for another 20 or something yards. And he hasn't played a ton of football. So again, it's just a little bit of the unknown. Like Fields and Lance could be those type of guys that could be big risers. But for me and my assessment, my studies and all of those type of things, there's just too many areas of like, uh, I'm not sure about that. And, ooh, I think he might be good, but I'd like to see a little bit more. And that's the problem with like Fields and Trey Lance to me, at least as far as the NFL is concerned. You know, again, it's I, I don't think anybody thought that this was going to be an easy adjustment for those two. I think that was a pretty common conversation. 
you know, coming from where they came from, the offenses they were in and everything like that. So it, it is, again, I like Trey Lance and everything he does, but there's some polish and some more experience that's needed and things that I need to see to feel comfortable to move him in front of some other guys who, yeah, he might have better top hop end talent, but they play the position and can do other things at a more consistent level than I believe like a Trey Lance or Fields can do at this point. 12th overall pick, first round pick 2022, first round pick 2023, third round pick invested in Trey Lance, and they are playing with fire here. They continue to be all in with Jimmy Garoppolo as their starter. They have soured on him because he can't stay healthy. Well, two years ago, he stayed healthy all the way to the Super Bowl, so they can end up having a huge mess for a variety of reasons. Jimmy Garoppolo could get injured during off-season workouts, mandatory minicamp, training camp, preseason, and then you're on the hook for $25 million and you have to go with Lance. I, I just still don't understand the mixed messages, but the folks at PointsBet parse through it all to come to the conclusion that the first snap of the season most likely to be taken by Garoppolo. He's the favorite in the betting odds. And uh, uh, minus, uh, I didn't hear you, Matt Casey, minus what? Do we have it? Minus 325 is the number for Jimmy Garoppolo. Bet 325 to win 100. Significant yeah. favorite to be the starter. And look, I think they're hoping for a, a Carson Wentz, Sam Bradford situation where yeah. there's an injury somewhere else and somebody says, we'll take Jimmy Garoppolo, we'll take his contract, we'll give you a first round pick. I mean, the Eagles got a one and a four for Sam Bradford. They were able to basically stick up the Vikings for a one and a four because Teddy Bridgewater tore his ACL two weeks before the first game of the season. Now, that doesn't happen very often. You know, you, you got preseason games to worry about, but practice, you know, you got the red jersey. It was a fluke thing. So if that's what the 49ers are hoping for, that, 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 that is not likely to occur. If anything, it's more likely Garoppolo's going to get injured than someone with another team. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, there's so many different ways this story can go right now. They could be good and bad for the 49ers. I mean... Yeah, I mean, you could have Jimmy G play, does really good, has a really good year, and maybe you trade him after the year. He's played a good year. Maybe you, you know, maximize your value that way. You know, there's the scenario you're talking about. Again, like we talked about with Justin Fields, and like I've already seen it already happen, so this is even less of a far-fetched idea because I saw Shanahan with RG3 back in the day, and that offense wasn't as good as this 49ers offense as far as the talent and the players on the roster like you talk about like if it gets close again yeah that's one where if it's close and I've done all those assets to trade up to number three to get this guy and I got a good team and I'd be scared to death that we're eight and two and Jimmy Garoppolo is the starting quarterback that's what I'd be scared of you know that's it's just a, it's a mess can of worms opened all of those type of things to where yeah like you're talking about if it's close I mean I know Shanahan can deal you know come up with an offense that's ultra ultra creative now with a running quarterback added to the mix and those weapons around him so that's where it's going to be interesting to see the progress Trey Lance can make will Shanahan be comfortable with that it is a team that's in the Super Bowl window it's some really weird conversations here when you talk about the 49ers out loud sometimes and what what's going on there right now here's what I am going to be curious about yeah next year if Garoppolo yeah, right. plays all year long. Right. Where's Lance going to be on your list next year? If we, if he, he's done nothing in the NFL in his rookie year. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.